coming up, the top 10 things you need to know about Octane Rating. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Australian new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. Here are the top 10 user-centric things that you need to know about octane rating. Number one, with a bullet, never use a fuel with an octane rating lower than the car maker recommends. This is a great way to damage your engine catastrophically. Going higher than the minimum octane rating the manufacturer recommends, well, that's quite okay. It's just gonna cost you more money in fuel, but no damage. Number two, octane rating has nothing to do with more energy in the fuel intrinsically. Ethanol blended fuels pump up the octane rating, but they actually contain less energy than low octane gasoline. The two things are unrelated. Number three, octane has nothing to do with the speed of combustion or the heat of combustion. These are two things that scientifically illiterate halfwits claim all the time. They're simply not true. Number four, octane rating is all about knock resistance. It's about that fuel burning in a controlled way under pressure while hot. High octane fuels simply resist auto ignition better than low octane fuels. And auto ignition is that Fuel starting to burn thanks to the heat and compression in the combustion chamber before the spark plug actually fires. That's what causes knock, which destroys engines at high RPM and big throttle inputs. So that's bad. Number five, if an engine is optimized for high octane fuel, the designers can increase the compression and add ignition advance because the fuel is more resistant to auto igniting. And it's these two things that derive a peak power increase for engines optimized for that high octane fuel compared with the same engine optimized for low octane. Number six, if you use high octane fuel in an engine designed for low octane fuel, the engine will adapt up slightly. The knock sensor is going to allow a small increase in ignition advance and there will be a slight increase in power. Only slight. Certainly not as much as there would be if they went out and increased the compression ratio properly. Number seven, here in Schittsville, it's almost never economically rational to use premium fuel in a car designed for regular. The extra cost of the premium fuel is, in practice, never offset by the slight increase in economy. You're just blowing money out the exhaust pipe, basically, and you're doing it unnecessarily. Number eight, this is, of course, why the fuel manufacturers talk up the alleged ancillary benefits of premium fuel, such as the totally spurious claim that it's going to keep your engine cleaner, whatever that means. And if you believe that... I will sell you the Schittsville Harbour Bridge. Just DM me. It's such emphatic bullshit. They're not promoting premium fuel because it's a benefit to you. They're promoting it because it's a benefit to them. Number nine. If you're reading owner's manuals from overseas, you need to bear in mind that octane ratings are not constant around the world. Here in Australia, we use Research Octane Number, or RON, and it's the same standard across most of Europe. But in North America, they use a thing called the Anti-Knock Index, which is the numeric average of the RON and another octane measurement standard called the Motor Octane Number, or MON. Essentially, for any given fuel, RON is going to be about four points higher than the Anti-Knock Index. So 91 RON here, which is our entry-level cat's piss petrol is about the same as 87 gasoline in the USA and Canada. And if you're wondering why so many Euro cars demand 95 here in Schittsville, it's because 95 is the default entry-level cat's piss in Europe. They don't do 91. Finally, number 10, right? Time to go 100% propeller heads. 
Octane rating is an index of the knock resistance of a particular fuel compared with a laboratory standard kind of fuel called iso-octane, which is actually 224-trimethylpentane for those of you who remained awake for carbon chemistry in high school. Iso-octane has an octane rating of 100, and another chemical called n-heptane has a rating of zero, and that's your basic octane measurement scale. So essentially, 91 ron unleaded has 91% of the knock resistance of iso-octane when you run a test in a special experimentally controlled engine with a variable compression ratio against a standard set of test protocols that is basically a miracle cure for insomnia. The engine runs at 600 RPM for the RON test and 900 RPM for the MON test. And the difference between those two values is an index of the fuel's sensitivity. It's certainly possible to have octane ratings greater than 100. E85 is about 102. Straight ethanol or methanol, both about 109. Propane and butane, think LPG. They're both about 112. Methane, that's natural gas, is about 120. Toluene, a fairly evil octane boosting additive, is about 121. And hydrogen gas is more than 130. Who knew? So there you have it, the full training course on octane rating, the gold medal winning automotive pub trivia championship. Now that much closer to being in the bag. Yes. All in about, I'm guessing, five minutes or so. Thank you for watching. Like, comment and subscribe. I dare you. In fact, I double dare you.